Hi, my name is Heidi Crockett. I'm a licensed counselor, and I have handouts on how to track your nervous system as part of kind of the brain fitness that I teach. So this video is an explanation of those handouts. And at the end, I'm actually just including the five minute chipmunk video just for those who have a little bit of difficulty finding my other video where that is. So here we go. This is tracking your nervous system. So the first handout at, that is good to start with is called learning new cues. And it's good to fill out the handout after you've had something happen where you become, I would say, abnormally stressed out compared to whatever it was. So I did this, for example, when I had a 45 minute phone conversation with my credit card, um, disputing these charges that were very complicated. And I had basically kind of a full blown sympathetic attack. And I wanted to track what happened in my nervous system and what were my cues for danger and cues for safety. So you start out with this handout, which looks like this on the first page, and then there's a second page to it. And it asks you to describe the experience. And then it asks you about cues for danger. In other words, what about the experience made you start to become more stressed out? Like when I was on the phone, it was the people not understanding me that was starting to get me more and more upset. And the reason why is that in the past, I had to make many hundreds of phone calls because I have a rare disease uh, to health insurance companies to, in order to get things done. So now when I make phone calls, I have this old story, which is like, if they don't understand me, I'm going to die. So I have this kind of post-traumatic stress after this health condition that I have. So anyway, the key is when you have these cues for safety and cues for danger, when you have a stressful situation, you want to learn how to interpret what you're doing. So that was an example of a cue for danger for me. And then there's what are your cues for safety. So when I thought back to the phone call, I realized that the, the representatives on the phone, they all were using actually pretty nice tone of voice. They weren't understanding me, um, but they were on the phone with me because they actually wanted to resolve my problem and their tone was friendly. So things I could do, for example, is go while I'm talking to them on the phone, go and look in the mirror in the bathroom to cue my social engagement system or put my hand on my heart, which produces oxytocin. So there are things we can do to give ourselves cues for safety. In the future, I'm going to listen to the tone. So you. Identify your cues for danger and your cues for safety on that handout. That's the first handout. And then another time or after you do the first handout, I have a handout. One's called Map 1 and the other's called Map 3 when I send it to you. And if you look at this ladder here, the idea is that we're normally in a safe place at the top. And this is where I was before I made the phone call. I was relaxed. I was okay. And then I quickly downgraded once I was on the phone. I went down on my ladder. So what you're going to do is you're going to name, once you fill out that first worksheet, you're going to name the three different states. And I'm going to go over what the states are because some people are confused about this. So the, it's called social engagement or safety. And I have an example of these three states on a video. You can find it on YouTube, Examining Your Pleasure Trap, Dysregulated Nervous System Q&A at minute 27. But I'm going to play, it's a chipmunk demo, but I'm going to play that at the end of this video. So if you want to fast forward to that last five minutes and then come back, you can. So in that video about minute 27, the chipmunk, before it loses its mommy, is in a state of safety. Then what happens? Is it goes into the sympathetic nervous system where the heart starts to race and there, you know, the adrenaline and people usually are familiar with the fight and flight response. And in that chipmunk demo, it was about minute 29 and a half where it's running from the, a predator. And then finally, the last one is this dorsal vagal collapse, and which is called life threat. And in the chipmunk video, it was about minute 31 and a half, and it was, this is what it looked like. 
and I explain it better in the video, I just want you to understand those are the three different states, because some people are confused about the three states. And then you are going to name the three states yourself. You can also use markers and fill out the worksheet, because what we want to do is we want to kind of bring in all of you as you do this worksheet. So some people might name this at home instead of the word safety. And someone might name danger something like terrified or angry instead of the word danger. And the life threat, they might call it dead to the world or invisible. So you can name, that's what those boxes on the side are for. So that was a second handout. And then the third handout is the most useful of the three because the cues that you gather, you can then use in the future when you get stressed out. So I moved that safety over so you could see it, but you're gonna put whatever you name in those three boxes and then you're gonna think, um, what can I do? What keeps me here? What can I do myself? That's in the top left. And what can others help me with? That's in the top right column. And then when you go down the sympathetic, you're gonna think, What's, what moves me out of here? What helps me go up one step on the ladder is the idea. And here's instructions. Reflecting on your answers from the first two worksheets, think about what you can do to shift your nervous system state to a calmer state. And if even if there's music you like to listen to, whatever it is, and then you can have these, this worksheet taped somewhere. And when you get really stressed out, you can look at it to remind yourself of things you can do to calm down your nervous system. So those are an explanation of the three worksheets. I want to thank Deb Dana because the handouts come from her book. And I want to show that video now for the next five minutes of the chipmunk. If you have any questions, you can just reach out to me at HeidiCrockett.com or HeidiCrockett at gmail.com. some of it because my picture is there but the chipmunk has lost his mommy and his brother and sisters and it's like oh my god <laughs> right and I asked the audience what do you think is happening next you can give yourself a minute what happens to the nervous system of this chipmunk and a woman in the audience said sympathetic fight flight but here's the key. There's something that happens milliseconds, not seconds, where you have the opportunity to engage that ventral vagus nerve. And here's how it works for the chipmunk. The chipmunk makes a noise. It's high pitched, okay? It's undetectable to reptiles, but the chipmunk's mother can hear it. So this is sort of one of the reasons why, like if I'm working with someone, that I try and be careful about my tone, that if you use softer, higher pitched tones, it's gonna soothe the person more, and because it, it has to do with this vagus nerve. So when the mom finds the baby, she's gonna look at him with soft eyes and a warm facial expression, and she may even return his squeak with her own rhythmic squeak. So they're making eye contact and they're soothing each other. This is if the mom hears the squeak. And what happens is the mom takes the chipmunk, where the audience went, aww, back to the safety of the burrow with the chipmunk's brothers and sisters. Okay, so that's like the happy ending. <laughs> that was the ventral vagus nerve calming the chipmunk down so it didn't have to go into sympathetic and then that dorsal vagal collapse which I'm now going to go into so let's say that there was no mommy then I asked the audience again what do you think happened next and this is where the sympathetic is the right answer so that doesn't happen so it makes that high squeak sound, mom doesn't come. 
so the chipmunk couldn't find the mother and then a cat approaches oh my god right then it's really going into the sympathetic state so then what does the chipmunk do it runs right or gets ready to bite the cat so that's the brain would shut off the ventral vagal system and activate the sympathetic nervous system so it could run and hide or if a cat could bite the cat that's that's step two so this is a three-part part of the polyvagal theory so if the fight or flight um, doesn't work so this is step three the chipmunk's dorsal vagus nerve kicks in the gear and it freezes it slows down its respiration and heart rate and it lets off those endogenous opiates to kill pain. So this is the same mechanism that allows a woman to give birth. Uh, it's happening here. Here's kind of the chipmunk preparing to die. And this is that collapse, that faint. So in the wild, uh, the next best thing that an animal can do is pretend like it's dead because if that predator thinks that the animal is dead, he may not eat it because he thinks it's unsanitary. Also, like a cat playing with a mouse and like playing with it in its mouth and just wiggling it around. If the body's limp, it's less likely to get injured. So there are reasons why we do this collapse. Um, but a lot of people, when this has happened to them, when they're extremely overwhelmed in their life and they collapse, and then they woke up again, they tend to think that their nervous system failed them. And my main message when I'm talking about how to regulate the nervous system and trauma is that your nervous system never failed you. Your nervous system is highly adaptive and intelligent, and it did what it needed to do, especially in moments of overwhelm. And what we need to do is we need to honor the body and appreciate the body and understand the language that it's speaking. When you get signs and signals and when you behave in ways not proper to the context of the stimuli you receive. So I'm gonna stop that video there and I just wanna end this recording about, I'll add my video, that when I say you're out of context at that very end, um, what happened was like with the, in my example, with talking with the credit card representative, out of context, me going into kind of a full blown sympathetic attack was a little bit out of context because I had a message that I needed to convey that they were overcharging me and I needed them to fix that but I didn't need to get super emotionally overwhelmed. So my sympathetic nervous system response was out of context to the external cues I was receiving. And it's actually that kind of mismatch that is the opportunity to realize where we have glitches in our nervous system and why these worksheets are so helpful. Because if we can catch the glitches and become mindful, our nervous system, instead of seeming like a blaring horn, sometimes like a noise horn, you can think of it as like a harp, like your, like your harp strings are playing. And once you understand the different strings of your heart, of the different tones of your nervous system, you can learn how to soothe yourself and get back into better states and communicate more effectively with people. So thanks for taking the time to listen to this video.